What's up everyone, Andrew Freed here. Today we're gonna to be breaking down Sir Duke by Stevie Wonder. We're gonna to listen to a live track, break down each section, show you how to play it, listen to the isolated tracks, talk about the bassist who plays it, and we are gonna go in. So let's go. So I'm on my website, Bass Freedom, where members can request these video breakdowns within the community. And today, we're going to be doing Sir Duke. I'd like to thank AJ, AJ Herrera, for picking this and posting this in the community. Sir Duke is an awesome tune. He posted here the video, so we're going to be doing a live track from this request. So before we break this down completely, let's learn a little bit more about Sir Duke. This incredible tune was from the legendary 1976 album, Songs in the Key of Life. It was a 1977 number one hit. It combined jazz language with pop and R&B as he was honoring his favorite jazz musician, Duke Ellington, hence Sir Duke, who died a few years prior to the song. This song has everything, catchy horns, a singable melody, Stevie, an amazing bass player. The bassist was Nathan Watts. Talk about an underrated bass player. It's so good, and if you thought the bass line was good, just wait till we dissect it even more. So let's check out this 2010 performance from Glastonbury. Let's just watch it first, then we'll break it down, then I'll play along with it. We'll talk about all the goodies. We'll isolate the bass track. We'll do all that fun stuff. Let's dive in. Oh, he's got the crowd going. Wow, a lot of people. Bass is very staccato, more than the live track. I like the choir, the, the, the group vocal. Oh, nice with the vocals. Ah, oh, Stevie just sounds so good. It doesn't matter whether it's 2010, 1976, or now in 2023. This man is a beast. So there's a lot of cool things going on in here. I really liked the live atmosphere. This was really cool just with the crowd. You can tell there's tons of people there. And the I like the choir, not a choir, the group vocals. Just so much more energy. You Usually you see tracks played faster live but th that wasn't faster than most tunes my last breakdown i did dancing queen and they played that like 10 times faster it felt like than the original track but let's start breaking this down it's it's such a good song so right there it, this song you know has elements and roots of jazz with Stevie's genre of, you know, funky, soulful type of music. But the drum beat right there off the bat is totally what gives it that jazzy feel. It's swinging, that drum beat, that The horns that come in over this, it's all just following the same chords that will be played in the verse. I even like that the bass fill, the that pickup, the drummer, that's all happening within the intro. So the chords are happening, you just may not know it, the, the horns are outlining it. And the verse is the first part where the bass comes in. This song is in the key of B major. It is a great combo of playing, 
within the chords of B major, but he also throws in some different things you may not have heard before. So let's break down this verse. That bass pickup is how it comes in. It does a cool little did it did. The verse is just four chords, and it's got a lot of similarities with it. The main things being it is definitely a root to fifth approach, which is a very common bassline approach with ghost notes. So let's check this out. It's not doing anything crazy here, it's the feel that makes this so good. Those tasty little ghost notes, which are just those percussive additions, the no pitch percussive additions. So it's staying true to the classic fundamentals of baseline creation. So Nathan Watts doesn't take long in this song to make his presence felt. Hey, if you don't mind, please give this video a like. It goes a long way for me as I'm trying to get the arrow pointed up on these YouTube videos. And if you take anything out of these or enjoy these, I appreciate you and that like goes a long way. So thanks so much. Let's listen to the verse with the isolated track. I use a program called Moises, which allows you to kind of take any track and it can isolate the drums and bass, but it kind of is a little robotic sounding, but it's still better than nothing. We got an isolated track. So check out this verse here. There's more ghost notes than you're hearing in there. This program really gets the sub bass type of frequencies out, but that is, trust me, it's in there that. So really tight, locked in with the drums. So we got a cool little transition into the pre-chorus. This pre-chorus is just dominant chords. If you see it on paper, it might look a little confusing with all these different chromatic dominant chords going up and down, but it's just playing root notes and it's a cool little way to lead us into the chorus. Let's listen to it both isolated and the track. <laughs> Love that slide. Cool, let's hear it as here. Let's hear it here. So, cool, simple part of the song, in my opinion, this is the most simple, because it looks crazy on paper in terms of chords, but you're just playing these staccato root notes that's gonna lead you into the chorus. Now it's time for the chorus. Chorus has got an interesting chord progression. It's pretty diatonic, but it's got this one chord that throws you off. Let's listen isolated first. F minor. So that chorus has the same type of ghost notey root fifth octave feel, but the chord progression is weird, it's different. It has B major to F minor. So F minor is a pretty weird chord here, not gonna lie, like diatonically speaking, as a composer, to throw in the F minor there, it's hard to pull off, but he does it. There's some motion with the vocals and just everything around it, it works, it pulls together. It makes it very unique. It makes it not sound too, you know, boring diatonically. So I think it's awesome. And the bass is really outlining all these chords with the same feel as the verse. Let's listen to it from the live track. Really cool, 
Definitely, definitely a cool chord progression, but nothing has changed too much from the verse. And then the next section leads into the big section. I call this the big riff or the shout section or the shout chorus. It's the most, it's the coolest part of the song. You gotta think that. Everyone's playing this pentatonic slash blues scale massive riff together. It's so cool. So let's check this out. All right, cool. <laughs> this is why I love isolated tracks. Do you hear that little pop at the top note? The he didn't have enough frets. He played that dead fret that those basses often have, and you can hear it. Listen again. It's only in the studio track. Again, that boo doo pop. I just, I love things like that. It's so cool. All right, let's check out on the live video. You can see how the, there's gang vocals with it, and it's, it's, we can listen to this a lot of times, and it's not gonna get old. Awesome, awesome. Let's listen to the isolated. So cool. As I said, it's pentatonic slash blues scale. If you learn your pentatonic scales and you know how to play them spanning your fretboard, this part isn't going to be too difficult for you. It is really just that scale phrased in different sectors of the instrument. It's awesome. It's the most fun part of the song. So to be honest, the rest of this song tends to uh, just be the same. You got the verse, the chorus, and the big riff section. But the bass evolves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play along with the track and then we're going to break down the final chorus where you hear Nathan Watts start to go off a little bit. And it's some of my favorite parts. He does these arpeggiated things. So let's play this and we will keep breaking it down. It's a pretty short song though. So that's the main bulk of the song. Let's listen to the end of the song. Listen to this last chorus. Oh man, that's so cool. Let's pull up the isolated track so you can hear it better. Woo! So he changes up completely what he's doing. Well, not completely, but he it's evolves. It's the end of the song. It's, everyone is at the peak of their dynamic range and he changes his bass line to a little more busy movement. So here's the bulk of what he's doing there. He's getting busier over the B major chord. Over the F minor chord is my favorite. He does this little arpeggio thing.
He does this F minor seven. He's just outlining your arpeggios. Know your arpeggios, but it's just so cool. It's my favorite part of the song besides the big section. There's some pieces of this you should really extract and totally do. If you're playing the song at a gig live, play that F minor seven chord. It's so cool. I gotta get back to transcribing that final course accurately, and I'm gonna make the tab available for you guys on Bass Freedom, but sheesh, that is such a good song. Every part of it, there's not one part I don't like. It's an absolute, absolute beast of a bass line, and everything is going to contribute to your playing, or just as a music lover, you're going to appreciate it even more. Thanks again to AJ for recommending this video within the Bass Frito community. If you guys are looking to level your bass game up, tons of courses, step-by-step -step lessons, hundreds are on the website in addition to picking my next videos. So that's the breakdown for today, guys. I love doing these. I'm gonna keep churning them out. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you all. Please give this video a like, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.